We sat back to wait for the arrival of the presents. Outside the wind blew and the snow fell thick and silent. It was the perfect Christmas Eve, the sort that comes in books and on cards. Crisp white snow outside and a warm, cozy cave inside. I was just about to check for presents under the Christmas tree when I noticed something was missing. Zanzibar, I said, looking all around me. Yes? He replied as if he knew I was about to ask him a difficult question. Oh? Zanzibar, I said again. It's about the presents for you and the rest of the crew. The mice, Stickles, Broomstick, Leslie, and all our friends and relations. I was just about to wrap them up and put them under the tree when I noticed something. What's that? asked Zanzibar, looking at me curiously. <coughs> well, it's the tree, I said. Or not the tree, if you get my meaning. Zanzibar clearly didn't get my meaning. He was looking at me very strangely. What tree? he asked. Well, that's it, I said relieved. Maybe he did understand, after all. We haven't got one, and I can't wrap presents and put them under the tree so we can all open them on Christmas morning if we haven't got a tree to put them under. I finished my long speech, feeling very pleased I'd managed to say it, so even I could understand what I meant to say, which I often didn't. But I did, this time. We haven't got a tree, I said to Zanzibar, who looked at me, nodding his head. That's right, he said. We haven't got a tree, because we never have a tree. We've never had a tree, not in four hundred more years. We don't have trees. Why not? I asked, somewhat puzzled. Because, said Zanzibar, starting to look uncomfortable. Well, it's because, and, and it could also be... Zanzibar looked round the cave as though he was hoping to find some place to hide. I wish we didn't have to talk about this. He whispered. It's so sad. Sad? I asked. Sad? Why sad? Shh! Stop shouting! Said Zanzibar, waving his paws in the direction of the door where my cloak, hat and broomstick were standing in their usual places. Except my broomstick wasn't standing at all. He was leaning against the wall of the cave... And he was crying. <laughs> Did you know broomsticks can cry? No, I didn't either. And it was a very sad sort of cry. <laughs> sort of like twigs breaking as though somebody was standing on them. Crushing them. Making them small and spindly. Broomstick! My dearest broomstick, I said, hurrying over to him. What on earth is the matter? Are you cold? Are you scared of the snow? Do you want to go out and fly around upside down and against the moon, like we do on my birthday? No, swished my broomstick. No, not really. Not tonight. Oh, Hecate, he said mournfully. It's so sad. It's so sad. And with that, he shuddered, burst into loud crying. <laughs> and two tears rolled down his handle and got stuck in his twigs. There, there, I said, feeling as though I really hadn't a clue what was going on. It was like falling from a great height and landing in a country where everyone was asking me how I was. But I couldn't understand a word of what they were saying. 
Oh, my broomstick and Zanzibar were trying to explain, but I just didn't get it. And then I did. I looked at broomstick and then at Zanzibar and then back at broomstick again. I get it, I said, jumping up and nearly knocking them both to the ground. I get it, of course. And I danced round the cave, waving my arms. Of course, I get it. Tonight is Christmas Eve, and it's when all the Christmas trees that have been cut down and taken into people's homes are decorated and look so pretty. But then after a few days, they start to dry out and their leaves fall off and they begin to look straggly and dejected and then they're thrown away. My voice trailed off and I stopped. Yes, whispered the broomstick. You see, I was a tree once. I was tall and proud and I swayed in the wind when it blew and I talked to the birds that sat on my twigs and built nests in my arms. And I was so happy and useful. And then someone cut me down. And when I was all dried up and withered, they made me into a broomstick. I'm just so lucky you found me, Hecate. At least with you I have a purpose. We fly around together, we have adventures. And if I'm bored, I can always sweep your floor. But thank heavens I wasn't cut up for firewood or logs, or just thrown away when I wasn't beautiful anymore. Oh, broomstick, I said, feeling very ashamed of myself. That's awful. Of course we won't have a tree. Not this year, not now, not next year, not any year. Not ever, ever, ever. We were all very quiet, trying to decide what to do next, when we heard a very small scratching coming from the wall. It was Mr. Spood, the spider, and he was walking towards us, all eight legs headed purposefully in our direction. I think I have an answer, he said to the tree issue, or not the tree, as it were. I can come up with something that will give you a lovely decoration and a place to put all your presents and gifts, and not one tree will be cut down. In fact, you'll have the most beautiful and unique tree in the whole world. Without saying anything more, Mr. Spood hurried to the roof of the cave and then swung himself down on a long, thin, silvery piece of web. Then he climbed back up and zoomed back down again. As we watched, Mr. Spood made his way up and down and up and down and up and down until he'd spun a long, strong pole made entirely of spider's web. Then he ran round and round the pole, up and down, making it secure and tall. We watched in amazement as, starting from the top, Mr. Spood swung himself out and back, spinning his web into branches. This is fun, he said, as he swung past me for the 3,715th time. I'm so used to spinning webs in the branches of trees. It's really exciting to spin the branches themselves instead. All through the night, the spider worked until my cave was filled with a glorious tree made of thin, sparkling silver web, glittering in the morning light which streamed through the windows. There, said Mr. Spood as he went back up the tree for the last time. I'll be the star on the top. I know I have more legs than most stars, but it's my tree and I think I should be up there. Indeed, we agreed. 
and Mr. Spood settled at the top of the tree, watching from his perch. I ran into the back of the cave and brought out all the presents I'd bought for Zanzibar, the mice, Leslie, Stickles, and all our cousins and friends. They soon piled up around the sparkly tree. How lovely, I said, turning to my broomstick, who was smiling and swaying as only a happy broomstick can. Zanzibar, who isn't often lost for words, was, for once, speechless. No trees were cut down to make this beautiful tree, I said. Mr. Spood, you are a genius. But Mr. Spood didn't hear me. He was exhausted after his night's work, and he was fast asleep at the top of the tree, smiling. Love from Hecate. Now visit Tayo and his friends. Uh.